welcome to Shape It Up. And today we are diving into how to eat out on Valentine's Day and still be able to lose weight or at least stay on track. So I have five tips for you. Plus I have some great bonus tips at the end. So if you wanna hang out here, uh, definitely stay and listen to the entire episode for those bonus tips. So diving right in, we are very close to February 14th, depending on when you're listening to this, because the podcast does come out on Thursday, which I believe is the day before Valentine's Day. But Valentine's Day kind of falls right after most people are falling off their fitness wagon for their New Year's resolutions, which is not a great time to have Valentine's Day. Now, ideally, we want to stay on the New Year's resolution bandwagon for for the rest of your life, um, but a lot of people do fall off that wagon, as we discovered in a couple podcasts ago. Usually January 18th is the day where people resign their resolutions and go back to their old ways. But if you have made it this far in February, Valentine's Day might be a big speed bump for you. So this is why I came up with these five great ways to enjoy your Valentine's Day, but still keep on track. So you know that Valentine's Day is filled with chocolate and usually a huge meal. And if you want to lose weight, that can really sabotage you. So step number one is actually happens before you even go out to eat. So that is what I like to call your pre-eating routine. So first off, you do not want to starve yourself. Most women think that if they don't eat anything all day long, then they're going to be golden when they go out to eat for Valentine's Day. This is a really bad idea. And the reason why it's a bad idea is you're really setting yourself up for failure. Because if you think about it, if you don't eat all day and you are really hungry when you get into that restaurant, everything on that menu is going to look delicious and you're going to want to eat everything. And once it comes out, you're going to engulf it and you're not going to have the um, space to really kind of check in with yourself and realize if you're hungry or when you're full, that kind of thing. So I don't recommend that you don't eat all day. What I do recommend is that you eat smaller portions throughout the day and you focus more on proteins and fats and vegetables. Save your carbs more towards your dinner because honestly, most of the dinners are really going to be based on carbs. So this eating the small portions throughout the day is definitely going to help you. You want to, you want to go into that restaurant feeling slightly hungry, but not where you want to go in and eat the menu, right? So that is one way you can counteract that. The other thing you can do before you get to the restaurant is do some recon. Now, by law, a restaurant, especially chain restaurants, they have to have their menu online and they have to list the calorie amounts. This is definitely to your advantage. Take advantage of this. Go online, scope out the menu, figure out what you want to eat, or at least have an idea of what you want to eat. Um, I do this all the time. Whenever I go out, um, I want to make sure that I at least have a sense of what I'm going to order. I always have backup plans in my mind that are usually standard in most restaurants, but definitely check out the menu. Think about what you want to eat and then look at it and see what's available to you. So step number two, here are just some guidelines. If you want to go more of the healthier route, you do not need to eat rabbit food in order to lose weight. So like a lot of people are like, well, I'm just going to get a salad, you know, and Salads are great, but most of those salads that are out there are not healthy. They're like loaded with like bacon bits and like lots of dressing and all kinds of stuff. So just because you're getting a salad doesn't mean it's actually the healthiest healthiest version on that menu. So one of the rules I have with all my clients is no foods are off limits. And I will get to this more towards the end. Um, And this is my philosophy on how you should really approach your lifestyle, that no foods is off limits. Uh, healthier options include broiled or grilled fish, fowl, right? Your chicken, your turkey, um, and beef. So if you can get anything grilled or broiled, that's the way to go. Vegetables, you can absolutely get a side salad. Just watch your dressings. Steamed broccoli, grilled asparagus, any kind of vegetable. You know, if it's not laden in cream sauce, you're pretty good with vegetables. Complex carbs, for sure. Yams, potatoes, not french fries, right? They don't really qualify. (laughs) Uh, Rice and quinoa. 
Be careful if you do order sweet potatoes. A lot of times they will put brown sugar and butter on top. You can get it on the side and sprinkle it on if you like. Um, but again, this is more if you're choosing really healthy options. Those are the guidelines that you want to go for. So number three are the apps, the bread basket, and the drinks. So apps, meaning not the, the things we use on our phone, but appetizers. I really recommend that you do one of two things with your appetizer. Actually, three if you want to really get technical. But number one, skip the appetizer altogether or make it your main meal. And the third option is share it with a friend. So if you've ever gone into a restaurant and you've ordered an appetizer and you've eaten it and then you think or you, you have this thought like, how on earth am I going to be able to eat the rest of my meal? I'm stuffed after I've eaten just the appetizer. That's a sign that maybe you should skip the appetizer or make it your main meal. Most appetizers are actually pretty calorie dense and they could be your main meals. Um, you just have to get over like the portion sizes. A lot of times the appetizers might be smaller. Um, and that's really just what you're thinking about on the food and the app, you know, the size of the food. Ah, uh, the dreaded and adored bread basket. So eating the bread will fill you up really quick. I recommend that you skip the bread basket or have one roll and make that roll last the entire meal. So meaning you can have a little bit of the roll in the beginning. When your meal comes, you still have a good portion of that roll. Eat the roll as you're eating your main meal and finish it either at the end of your meal or thereafter. Drinks. I highly recommend that you go for water and or unsweetened iced tea. Do not add sugar to it. Sounds boring, maybe. But if you're looking for weight loss, you can save a ton of calories in this category alone. Alcohol and soda are a great way to pack on the pounds. Alcohol especially. The body considers alcohol a poison. So when you ingest alcohol, your body's main job is to get the alcohol out of your system as quickly as possible. This is a lot of times why you get flushed, why you start sweating, why your heart rate, rate goes up. Um, it's all your body trying to flush the poison out of your system. The bad thing about alcohol is that because your body's trying to get it out of your system, this means that the food that you have eaten is just sitting there. It's not getting metabolized because your body's so busy working on getting the alcohol out. The other bad thing about alcohol is it's going to lower your inhibitions. So this makes it more likely that you're going to be like, screw my weight loss diet, I don't know, or goals or whatever. I'm not doing this. And you're going to wind up eating more than what you in intended to eat. So if you can skip those, I highly recommend that. Number four is portion size. Unless you are fine dining, and even with fine dining, usually you get those really tiny little portions, but you usually have like six or ten courses of those little tiny portions, so it does add up. But in regular restaurants, usually the portion sizes are pretty huge. And I recommend either sharing them with a friend or getting a to-go container as soon as your meal comes out. Don't wait till you're halfway eating or anything like that. Get it as soon as your meal comes out. That way you can either scrape half of it off then or at least it's there right when you need it. I like to look at the to-go container as making the meal last longer. So if you have this to-go container, see how many meals you can make out of those leftovers. So if you take it home for dinner, see if you can make it last Saturday, Sunday, maybe even Monday, you know, if you want um, to use it as dinner or lunches again. Uh, I love that idea because it's more of an abundance about the food rather than you're taking it away from yourself at the dinner. Number five is dessert. We've made it to the dessert round. Um, so depending on where you are in your weight loss journey, I would have to say skip the dessert. And I know you probably don't want to hear that, but again, depending on how close you are to whatever your ideal goal is or your weight, if you're closer to your ideal physique, you can get away with a little bit more dessert. But if you've got 50, 100 pounds to go, you might want to skip the dessert. Usually the dessert is like packed with calories and, and the other thing is you can have dessert anytime you want to. So I recommend that you skip the dessert and also ask yourself why you feel you need to have the dessert. That's a good question to 
ponder. Um, the other option is, is you can split the dessert with your Valentine, or you can use the to-go box, um, like I suggested in the former suggestion. So some things to think about your Valentine Day dining experience. What do you want to get out of your dining experience? What do you want to see happen while you're there? Are you there to enjoy each other's company? Is the food the main event or is it the conversation and the experience that you're going to have with your Valentine? How do you want to feel, this one's important, how do you want to feel when you leave the restaurant? Do you want to feel stuffed and can barely walk? Or do you want to feel comfortably full and right on track? So here are my bonus tips. Hopefully you have stuck around for those. Um, bonus tip number one, eat only when you're hungry and stop when you're comfortably full. If you are very in touch with your stomach and your hunger signals, this will be easy for you. If you are overweight and you've kind of lost touch with your hunger signals, this is going to be challenging for you. But if you can master this, life is good and you're going to be able to master your weight very easily. Um, and number two is you always have a choice. You are either getting closer to your goals or you're getting further away from your goals. And that's really what it comes down to. It's just the little choices that you make throughout the day. And if you make more choices that are getting you closer to your goal, you're going to get there. If you're making more choices that are pulling you away from your goal, you're going to wind up right where you are. All right. Thanks so much for listening. I will talk to you next week. Take care.